Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Food for Thought. Today is Wednesday, April the 14th, 2021. My name is Pastor Clint Lang from Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House, BC, Canada. Glad you can join me this morning. We're continuing our adventure into the parables of Jesus. And today we come to a parable called the parable of the praying Pharisee and the praying tax collector. And it's found in Luke chapter 18, verses 9 to 14. So if you have a Bible and you want to follow along, it'd be great to get one right now. But in this scripture, Jesus tells the story. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood up and prayed all about himself. God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all that I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but it, he beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and everyone who humbles himself will be exalted. Now, when we look at the uh, parable here, Jesus tells the story of this tax collector to start. And um, this tax collector, he, he was confident in his own righteousness, and he looked down upon everyone else. Um, it, it's really... Uh, a story about how human pride uh, is contrasted towards a person who humbles himself and recognizes their need for God's grace. You see, the Pharisees in Jesus' day, they, they were experts in the letter of the law. They, they took pride in their great knowledge of the law of Moses and the traditions of their forefathers. And... Um, you know, the Pharisees in tradition were encouraged to memorize whole passages of the Old Testament. And, and uh, from a young age, they were given great accolades by uh, their parents, their teachers, and their peers for performing in front of people and having great skill in memorizing. Um, the backpats that they received actually buffeted their egos and and in the state of inflated ego these men looked at themselves more highly than they should have instead of seeing the fact that they're sinners in need of God's grace they looked at themselves as being righteous and, and they looked down upon others who didn't perform as well as they did despising people from the outward appearance of being low, carnal, and unspiritual. Now, Jesus could see through all of this, and he wanted to make a point that a person cannot attain righteousness on their own merits. It actually is foolishness to think that uh, we can. You see, the Apostle Paul, he used to be like this when he was a Pharisee, thinking of himself as being righteous, doing God a favor by even destroying the early Christian church. But Jesus confronted him on the point of his own foolishness. And he was humbled on the road to Damascus. You see, God appeared to him. Jesus, in his glorified form, appeared to him and in his brilliance, in the brilliance of his unveiled presence, Paul was blinded by the presence of Jesus' light. It was so incredible. Paul saw for the first time that his righteousness was nothing in compared with the incredible glory of the holiness of his creator. And, and after this humbling encounter, the Apostle Paul wrote to the Roman church in Romans chapter 12, 3. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought, but think of yourselves with sober judgment according to the measure of faith God has given you. See, God, God is holy. 
and he's so far above our human righteousness that scripture has even tell us that man's efforts and righteousness are like filthy rags compared to the brilliance of the holiness of the creator God. I mean, when you look at the creation out there, the, the heavens declare the glory of God. And, and if we were to see God in his unveiled form, all of us would be on our faces before him, realizing our sinful disposition and, and, and our unworthiness to approach the presence of God in our own merit. You see, Jesus contrasts the prideful spirit of the self-righteous Pharisee with the spirit of humility of a penitent tax collector. Now, during Jesus' day, tax collectors had made a horrible name for themselves. Not only were they looked down upon by the people for uh, being collaborators with the oppressive Roman government, but they, they, they were also taking advantage of people by collecting more tax than they should to line their own pockets at other people's expenses. So, so the tax collector, Jesus wasn't saying that the common tax collector was righteous and was doing the right things by doing all this, but the particular tax collector that Jesus uses in this parable was a, a man that understood his wickedness, that understood that he was a sinner and that he was not righteous in his own merit. He, he was sorry for being sinful and wicked before God. And as a matter of fact, he understood that he was deserving of God's wrath. So he humbled himself before the Lord and in a spirit of repentance, he beat upon his breast. And he cried out, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And Jesus made the point very clear. See, the man who exalted himself in his prideful spirit was not pleasing to God. He was looking at himself more highly than he should have. But the repenting tax collector who understood his broken condition and humbled himself before God, that man went home forgiven because he understood of his own nature, he was unable to be righteous before God. So he cried out to God for mercy. And God, in the end, looked at him with favor. In the end, it wasn't the, ta it wasn't the Pharisee who was made right before God. It was the unrighteous tax collector. For the tax collector came to understand one important characteristic of God that wound up being his salvation. This understanding is what King David spoke about in Psalm 103, 1 to 12, when he said, Praise the Lord, my soul. All my inmost being praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your mouth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord's work is righteousness and justice for all of the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love, he will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our iniquities deserve. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. When you look at that scripture from David in context, with this parable of the tax collector and the Pharisee. I think it's very clear what is pleasing to God. For all who humble themselves before God will be exalted. But those who raise themselves up before God on their own merit will be humbled. This is Food for Thought. Have a wonderful day.